Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Zoom for Halal Metropolis. This is our second series dealing with Muslims in Southeast Michigan and how they are coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we're talking to Fanta Dumbia. Perfect, Dumbia. Dumbia. She is a pillar in the community as all the other sisters that I've spoken to during this series. She has a bachelor's degree from U of M Flint and a master's degree from U of M in Ann Arbor in, what is that discipline again? Clinical, um, social, clinical work. social work, yeah. Yeah, okay. So again, thank you Fenta for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking your time. I know you're very, very busy. Um, tell us what's been going on with you um, during COVID. Definitely. Um, thank you for um, reaching out. Khadija, my home girl, thank you for um, referring me. Um, alhamdulillah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa sallam. Um, Bismillah. Yeah, so it's been a lot. It's been a lot. So if you hear any background noise, sorry, that's what it's like working from um, home. I have a one-year-old who's just um, everywhere exploring the world. Um, and that includes destroying. And so <laughs> I have to ignore her and then clean up afterwards. Okay. But um, life um, during COVID and quarantine has been trying to make the home everything. A school for my five-year-old um, kindergartner, um, a daycare for my one-year-old, my um, toddler, um, and also my working, uh, my working space. So trying to, and then trying to have a work-life balance. It's like, how do you have a work-life balance at home when you are having work at home? It has definitely, the struggle has been real. Um, and it's also trying to find ways to prioritize my mental, my spiritual, my physical health because it's easy to gain weight. Quarantine weight has been real. I went yeah. to my doctor appointment the other day. She was like, you gained a lot of weight. And I'm like, well, I've been a skinny girl all my life, so I'm happy to be gaining weight. Um, so that's a positive, but I should be eating healthy and spiritual health of just like feeling like you don't even have time to be consistent in your prayers or remembering to, you know, do a fish and if, um, you know, proficient prayers because you're like, okay, I got to fit my prayer in then I got to get the girl, you know, my daughter logged in, got to make sure the other one is um, occupied and then have a session and whatnot. So I'm, I'm a full-time clinical um, therapist. Um, so currently I, work at a private practice where I'm serving clients who have experienced like traumatic brain injuries from accidents or anything, swimming, all those things. And also clients who experience like anxiety, depression, and all those interesting things. So it's trying to find a balance. What life during COVID quarantine has looked like is trying to find a balance of my health, but also being there to help clients um navigate and prioritize their mental health so oftentimes it's like that's what i do as a profession you know um as a therapist but also trying to make sure i'm taking care of my mental health and that's been a very a struggle during this during this time okay have you found an increase in clients during COVID because of the um quarantine and how are you dealing with that Yes, I definitely have. And that's been a blessing. Um, um, it has impacted a lot of my clients who probably their support was their coping mechanism, you know, being able to be around family and that being taken from them and having to get used to the virtual world, especially my older clients is like, how do I use this thing? What is this thing called Zoom and X, Y, and Z? So it definitely has increased a lot of um, stress but most of all feeling um, isolated, you know, and also have the, did some positive t things like, you know, um, relationships becoming um, better 
or like parents and children relationships becoming better, but also the negative impact is, oh my God, do I even like this person? <laughs> Being with them all the time is stressing me out, you know? And like right. a lot of people think, oh, I need a divorce right now. And it's just like, no, this is just a year where we're, you know, looking in our deepest self and our relationships and assessing ourselves. That's what I, I think 2020 to 2021 has been like. Okay. During your, your services with your clients, you said your clients are Muslim? No, not not majority of my clients. I think I have only one Muslim client. Okay. The private practice I work for isn't uh, Muslim owned, but okay. in the near future, inshallah, that's my goal to open up my own private practice serving my Muslim community. Inshallah, inshallah. So what are your uh, immediate goals as far as your practice goes and your um, and dealing with COVID if it happens to last another year? My media goals currently as a clinical therapist at the private practice on map. Yeah. Um, to help the clients um, be able to explore whichever goals that they're um, that they have. If it's goals of dealing with anger, anxiety, of depression, being able to help facilitate that so they can be their healthy, their best self mentally, mm -hmm. um, but also being realistic of what does that look like? Because you know during an, a time of quarantine or where we're, you know, taking our precautions. Because oftentimes in traditional, you know, therapy may be like, okay, challenge yourself, go talk to a friend or go join a, a, um, a group of being able to um, help clients be able to still do those things with our accommodations. Okay, um, you, you still probably need a group. Let's see if there's any virtual groups. Let's see if there's any face, Facebook groups and things or, or whatnot. So being able, for them to still reach their goals, even still during this pandemic, finding accommodations that we can still be able to be our best selves mentally uh, while we're social distancing, you know. Right, right. And you may a lot reward you for your efforts to help the people. Um, you mentioned previously that you have speaking engagements. What have those been like? Um, they have been fulfilling to be able to serve my community every time I have an opportunity to talk about mental health in the Muslim community. It makes me, um, makes me, um, it increases, um, my motivation because that is why I went to the field, um, of mental health because I wanted to, we need it. We need more mental health professionals in our community that look like us, you know, um, appearance wise and faith wise to be able to break the stigma. So um, last week um, with Rahma's Worldwide, I got to, had a great um, Zoom conference that focused on like culture, generational gaps in mental health. So being able to break the stigma of mental health in the Muslim community and um, also having like intergenerational conversations between parents and elders and children and the youth to break the stigma of mental health within our community. Um, and then the recent one that I just did from my um, amazing, um, I went to Alaclash Training Academy. Um, so I always love to get back and we had a parent appreciation um, program and um, I was asked to give some remarks of just um, about parents being able to prioritize their children mental health during this um, 2020 pandemic, COVID, and being more aware. So um, just talking more so about how can we use our faith um, just to have more mindfulness in our house. And because as Muslim, it's a very mindful religion, the way we do our prayers, the way we do our dhikr, the way we do our Quran and our fasting. And if we use those as schedules of, you know, teaching our kids gratitude and mindfulness, it taps in. And then also Monday, I have um, a workshop that I'll be giving to the Alaclaw students on um, ways that you can prioritize your mental health. So it has definitely been fulfilling because I, it is definitely my mission um, to do as much work and as much psychoeducation that I can do in my community about mental health because I've always, since out of young age at Ala Class, from the exposure of my mentors, I have a passion of the intersection of spiritual health and mental health and how they're so intertwined and how we need a balance, you know, and how they depend on, depend on one another. Again, Mela bless you and reward you. I, I want to thank you, Fanta, for joining Halal Metropolis during our second series on Southeast Michigan Muslims dealing with COVID-19 and, and 
you know, Allah has given you a true gift, I see. And um, may you continue to expand and, and assist more people in our community. I mean, thank you guys so much for um, wanting to interview me and taking time out of your day. Um, really means a lot. And may Allah bless you guys for the work that you guys are doing in highlighting such stories. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.